Where are those anglers who left Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour during this season, 2024? Where do they stand right now? That's what we're going to talk about. If you like this kind of content, do me a favor, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family, and thank you. I'm going to continue to repeat it. I apologize. It's been overwhelming. I am I'm now enjoying doing YouTube again, which is very was very tough to say. But it's the people who are interact with the channel and comment and click that subscribe and like and all of y'all. Thank you for doing it. And I really appreciate it. And I won't say it enough, but thank you. But if you're not a subscriber, click that button. There were a bunch of anglers that left the Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour during the start of the 2024 season because Bass Pro Tour said they were going to make the BPT as elite as possible and cut it down to 50 anglers. And some of them or most of them knew right away they probably weren't going to requalify. So why not? Why give another year to an organization that isn't going to help you or propel you to the next level? And there were lots of big names and fantastic anglers that just were or are exhausted by the constant changes that happen on the BPT. But where do those anglers stand now? Are they going to requalify for the leads? Are they fishing the MPFL? What is happening for them or to them right now? I want to make this really clear. The anglers that are going or are participating in the Opens and the EQ for the Bassmaster Elites to try to requalify for it, that group of anglers is fighting an uphill battle. That elite open group or that open tournament series is arguably the hardest to get back into. Even though they take nine spots, there are so many unbelievably great anglers in that field that you really need to be on top of your game. And I can see, and having one bad tournament really can cost you a ton of points, but being consistent will keep you up there and possibly allowing you to qualify for the leads. And there could be other reasons why the anglers left too. It could be financial. It could be that they didn't want to fish. They were just sick of major league fishing. They were, they want to continue fishing, but to do it at a lesser place where they are more competitive and they have a better chance of making money because it is a money making venture for them. It's a business. You can't just go out there and think that you're going to catch fish every day, all day. You need to be very particular about how you fish, your sponsorships, all the stuff that comes with being a professional angler. Now the anglers that are left are just, I threw them up there. It's, I think it's alphabetical surprisingly, but I didn't do that. I just did it off what I was reading. But the first thing we're going to talk about is Tommy Biffle, who didn't is not fishing the Opens, is not trying to qual requalify for the Leeds. He's fishing the MPFL, which is a really good area or good place to be when you're at the caliber of Tommy Biffle. He's currently in 62nd in Angler of the Year points and only has won about $8,200 on the MPFL. But really, the thing is, the MPFL is so far behind in terms of schedule, where Major League Fishing is good, is done was done this weekend as of yesterday, and the leads will be done next week. The MPFL still has only fin fished three tournaments so far, so there's still three or four tournaments left in their schedule for 2024. So he has still a great opportunity to make some money. Josh Butler has had a really roller coaster season. I mean, really roller coaster. He fished, finished first at Logan Martin which I think must be his favorite place to fish because he does really well there. And then he's had an 139th at Lake St. Clair. He's had $48,000 or $48, in earnings on the Open. He's currently uh, 22nd in Angler of the Year points, and he's probably too much, too far behind to qualify this year. I have in my notes, he's almost 200 behind, 200 Angler of the Year points behind first and 100 points behind ninth place. And while there's still a few tournaments left, I think three, that you could make up some of those, but it's highly unlikely, to be honest. Those guys at the top are fishing ridiculously good. And that 139th really hurt him. You need to be very consistent in the open EQs, or else you're just going to hurt yourself and not requalify and wait for another season. Mitch Crane, they call the dentist. I don't think he's fishing anymore, professionally fishing. Maybe he's fishing the Toyota Series or some local stuff. Uh, it seems like he's just doing his thing as a professional, and I, I really respect that. And hopefully he's doing well. But Mitch Crane, I didn't find much information about him. Roy Hawk is currently fishing the Toyota Series, the Western Division. 
And he's currently in sixth in angular year points in that division. And he's had a pretty good year. He's won almost $30,000 on that Toyota series. And I want to make this clear. The Toyota series is a great option for a lot of anglers. The entry fees are not really that bad, fifteen or $1,600, versus the payouts are pretty good. And it's a really good option for anglers that are wanting to try to get to that level or just stay at that level. But for Roy, he's had a great year. He had a win on Lake Havasu recently. And this is, like I said, this has been a great option for him. And I think more anglers should do it. Next is Brett Height, the king of chatterbaits. I have a story about him, just quickly. Years ago on Lake Okeechobee, he was driving away. I stopped his car and said, dude, if I can, I wanted to interview him, but at the time I said, if I can just say thank you for all the work you put into making the jackhammer. And he looked completely confused when the big giant skunk ape approached him. That's me. And uh, it, was, it was really funny, but we talked for a few minutes and just one of the nicest guys in the whole world. He's currently 88th in angler of the year points in the opens. He doesn't have a shot to qualify for the elites this year. He needs to make sure he gets back on the horse in 2025, reorganizes himself and gets himself into the best shape that he can and do his best. But as of right now, there's no shot of him qualifying for the opens, uh, for the elites. Timmy Horton's another guy that I just haven't seen any recent activity in tournaments, but I do think he's He's filming and doing his outdoor show. I think you can go to Timmy Horton Outdoors and find out more information. But I don't think he's fishing professionally or competitively. And that's all right. Some guys have to make that decision. In his case, it's probably more profitable to do the TV show and the internet show and stuff like that than to be out there beating the banks and hurting yourself and being tired as a competitive angler. But as of right now, I didn't find any information on Timmy Horton. The same can be said about Jeff Crete. I actually think he's probably saltwater fishing. I think he has such a big passion for fishing, it doesn't matter what he's doing. Bass fishing, saltwater fishing, offshore fishing. But I think right now Jeff Crete is out there as a charter or a guide or something, but I didn't find any information on him either. Next is Russ Lane. He's currently 124th in Angler of the Year points in the Opens. He does not have a shot to requalify. And he's only cashed one time out of six in the Opens. He doesn't fish the NPFL, which I think would be a great option for him. But he's currently not in the running to make the Elite Series for 2025. His best finish of the year was 32nd on Lake Eufaula. And the rest of his season has really been over 100. Like 132, 169, that kind of stuff. He's really not been in contention other than he finished 32nd on Eufaula. Jordan Lee is next. Of course, Jordan Lee used an exempt, his exemption to get back into the elites, which I think was a brilliant idea. Jordan started off the year on fire. I really thought Jordan was going to be angler of the year. And then as the year progressed, he's gotten a little worse each time. He's had some amazing finishes this year. He's currently in 11th place in angler of the year points. And he will, of course, requalify for the elites in 2025. And he's just had... He's just faded recently. He started off in 9th, 15th, 5th, 12th, 31st. Then he went 92nd, 40, and 41st. He still has the tournament that's going on today on Monday and then next tournament. So he can turn it around. Angler of the year probably won't happen, but still in contention and really had a great year coming back to the elites. He should be really happy with that move back and the money they probably made and the sponsors that he made happy. And this was a good year. This was, I actually think this was a pretty good year for Jordan. Next is Cody Meyer. I believe Cody will probably qualify for the Leeds. He's currently third in angular of the year points in the EQs. He's 31 places behind first place, and he's cashed five out of six times with his highest place in, highest finish was ninth place. He has been extremely consistent. That's what it takes to be on the EQs to move into the Leeds. Consistency is unbelievably important. Having one bad tournament really knocks you down. You need to be always in that top 30, 35 to get those important angular of the year points. But I see Cody, I see Cody uh, qualifying without any problems. And I should say congratulations. Former classic winner Cliff Pace is currently sitting in 30th place in angular of the year points. His best finish has been 17 with three caches out of six events 
on the opens. He probably won't requalify, but he does have an exemption. And there's a good chance that an exemption spot will open up, allowing Cliff to get back in. And if he gets that opportunity, he should use it and take it. It's not been a great year, but it's not been the worst year. He's been really average on the EQs and on the opens, and he is just I think that I think that spot will open up, even though I don't like exemptions. I think the spot will open up, and it will uh, allow him to get back into the to the leads. My boy Randall Tharp is not going to qualify for twenty twenty five. It's been uh, a rough year. He's sixty seventh in Angular of the Year points in the opens. He has had uh, a third place on Okeechobee, and that's been his best finish. And he's also had three absolutely horrible finishes. And again, if you're not consistent, you're not going to make it. I hope that he sticks with the Opens and continues to try to requalify, but it is a long, hard, tenuous process to make the Elites. To get to those levels of BPT and the Elites, you really need to be unbelievably focused and fish really well. And those spots are coveted by so many anglers. They're just not handing them out. So requalifying in 2025 is probably what he's going to have to do to try to make the 2026 season. And then last, and I don't know why he's last, is Dakota Eber. Probably, arguably, other than Father Gill up there on the e, on the EQs and the Opens, Dakota's really had an absolutely ridiculously good year. I said it in one of my videos. I knew he would requalify. He's just too good of an angler. He's really that good. And I know I said his name wrong a long time ago. I know it's Eber. I know it. So thank you, everybody. But Dakota has been absolutely ridiculous. He has He's one point out of Angler of the Year on the EQs and the Opens. And that's unbelievable. And he's got a check five out of six times this year. And his highest place, he had a fourth on Santee Cooper. He's been consistent. It's all it can, comes down to consistency. Dakota is really, really a good angler. Poor chasing sonar he's good at. Beating the banks, he can do it all. And that's what it takes when you're fishing these EQs because you're going from one end of the spectrum to the other end in the way it's fished and the areas that you fish. So being consistent down south to up north really has a big play in how the anglers do. So anyway, that's how the anglers are doing as of right now. There's still some tournaments left. Some things can change, but I wanted to do something to see where these anglers were at. Hopefully you like this kind of content. If you do, click that like and subscribe button. And thank you. Remember, take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Cheers and thank you.